Hi, welcome to the Shuttle Launch Simulation Facility. I'm Charlie Bolton. I've flown the shuttle into space four times, twice as a commander. My colleagues have put together an interesting little experience for you today. You're about to go on a high fidelity launch simulation, and I'm going to help you get through it. See, before any launch, all astronauts have spent thousands of hours being tested and trained in simulators, a lot like the one you're going to ride. You'll be riding in a special module that fits right into the payload bay. But before you go aboard, we'd better go over a few basics. Launch preparation for your mission would have started accelerating here at KSC months in advance. But let's cut through all that and move to way closer to launch. I'll start your clock at, say, uh, four hours before liftoff, when it's still dark out. Before you got suited up, the shuttle's external tanker ET was fueled up. The ET holds fuel for the shuttle's three main engines. Inside the ET, there are actually two separate tanks. One has liquid hydrogen at 423 degrees below zero. The other, liquid oxygen at 298 degrees below zero. They start really cold. But when those two liquids meet in the shuttle engines, <laughs> you'll find out. About two hours before you launch, you boarded the orbiter through what we call the white room. As you climb through the hatch, that orbiter already seemed like it was a living, breathing thing. Then they pulled back the access arm and left. Everybody else is smart enough to get out of the air and fans, and you and your crewmates are strapped to the reason why. Within 400 feet of the pad, the flames and heat from the engines will kill you. Within 800 feet, the sound will kill you. Within 4,000 feet, the snakes and alligators might kill you, because all that low-frequency vibration really stirs them up. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's back it up to T minus 10 seconds. Those sparks are hydrogen free burners or sparklers. They help prevent a fire or explosion by burning off any excess fuel around your vehicle. At T minus 6.6 .6 seconds, the main engine will ignite. You will hear a loud roar, and you'll feel a big rumbling. After the main engine start, you'll feel the shuttle sway forward a little. But don't worry, it's engineered to come back to vertical before you go. That's what we call the twang. You're getting a lot of power from those main engines but you're gonna need even more to get to orbit. That's where the solid rocket boosters, or SRBs, come in. These guys were the most powerful solid fuel rocket engines ever flown. The SRBs ignite when the countdown gets to zero, and believe me, you'll know it. Once you fire the SRBs, you can't turn them off, so you're going somewhere. You better just hold it up. Now, here's how all that's gonna happen to you in real time. Take your 
your chances in the sim and hope the sim supervisor goes easy on you. Now it's time for you to experience the sensations of launch firsthand from inside the shuttle. See you aboard. Trainees report to simulator. Trainees report to simulator. Ladies and gentlemen, may we have your attention please. Your shuttle simulation team is making final preparations for your launch. Please stand by. The doors will open momentarily. Thank you.